We've all seen a deadlift that looks like this. Ugh. Common, ubiquitous even, but not pretty. And this may even be your deadlift at working weight. Hey, it's not a character flaw, it's just a technique error. Today, we're gonna fix it with a simple mental cue. Hey, Gray Steel Nation, Sully here with the Barbell Prescription, keeping you fit after 50. Let's do a thought experiment, or as it is more elegantly and classically known, a gedunkin experiment. Let's have you go over to the leg press machine and start titrating up to a heavy set of five. How much can you leg press? If you're like most people, you can leg press much more than you can squat. So the answer is, I can leg press a lot. That's not the experiment. That's just the setup. Hold on. Let's examine the equipment. The leg press machine consists of a seat with a rigid back pad, a foot plate welded to plate posts to serve as the load, and an incline along which the load is pushed. It's precisely because you are moving the load up an incline and not vertically that you can leg press so much more than you can squat. And that, by the way, is why the incline plane is one of the classical simple machines. You have to do the same total work but with lower force production over a longer distance. Less force means you just don't have to be as strong. But I digress, and I'm not in the mood for force vectors and trigonometry at the moment. Our Gundalkin experiment has to do not with the inclined plane, but rather with the seat. Having determined your max leg press weight, here's what we're gonna do. Remove the back of the seat, and then do your max leg press without any back support. Ready? Go. Try harder next time. Now, this unpleasant experimental protocol, clearly a violation of the Helsinki Declaration, is not dissimilar to the atrocities committed daily in gyms all over the world by deadlifters and squatters who do not attend to their backs. In fact, the situation with barbells is even worse than the case of the backless leg press because in the case of barbell training, the ground against which the feet must push is stationary and force must be transmitted through the back. A lot has been written and discussed about setting your back for the deadlift, and you should pay attention to it. But in many, if not most cases, it's not an outright failure to set the back that I see. Instead, I see the set it and forget it deadlift error. Here's how that works. To placate his coach, the athlete puts on a very good show, approaching the bar in the systematic, methodical five-step process of the starting strength deadlift, checking all the boxes, stance, grip, shins on the bar, breathe and raise the chest, extending the spine. Now, all is in readiness for step five. Drag the bar up the legs. The athlete begins the lift and the set it and forget it back now reveals that it's more forget than set and rounds up into a curvaceous kitty cat back. Meow. The tight straight spine goes soft as the bar leaves the floor when the lift begins. You see, that's the problem. The athlete has not internalized the deep and transcendent truth that the lift actually began from the moment he put hands on the bar in step two. That the lift continued when he dropped his shins to the bar that the lift intensified when he took a breath and intensified again when he raised his chest, setting his back against the weight of the bar. Lifting the bar does not begin at step five. It began at step two with the grip. Dragging the bar up the legs is a continuation of the lift that began in step two, not the beginning. Conversely, the lift is not the step that comes after setting the back. The lift is the continuation of setting the back because you never stop setting the back. Let me say that again, albeit more tersely. The deadlift and its back setup start at step two and both continue until the end of the rep. From the moment you put your hands on the bar, you are taking the weight in your hands stretching out your arms and wrists between the bar and the floor. From the moment you raise your chest, you are setting your back against the weight of the bar, and setting your back transmits force to the bar 
through your arms and your tight grip, continuing the process of lifting it before it even leaves the floor. Setting your back is lifting the bar. Lifting the bar is setting your back. Your back setup is never complete. It continues throughout the entire pull. At every moment, you are continuing to actively set your back so that force can be efficiently transmitted from the hip chassis to the bar, which is what it is to deadlift. An equivalent nerdy Newtonian perspective on deadlift form is to regard the setting of the back as an integration of infinitely many back setups, setting the back at every infinitesimal point as it travels up the legs. With the bar on the floor, you are setting your back. With the bar an inch off the floor, you are setting your back. With the bar 1.87659873919 feet off the floor, you are setting your back. With the bar at lockout, you are setting your back. Putting the bar down, you are setting your back. And let's be clear, you are continuously and aggressively setting your back, not primarily for barbell safety, although it certainly does help you avoid training injuries, but to effectively transmit force to the bar in your hands because your spine is literally the force transduction element between the hips and the load. Failure to actively set your back throughout the deadlift is like allowing somebody to pull out the seat back in the middle of a leg press. It doesn't just make the deadlift uglier and a bit less safe. It makes the deadlift more difficult because it allows your spine to degenerate from a force transmitter to a force absorber, allowing energy to be dissipated into the deformation of a body rather than transmitted to a load. Now, we're always asking for you to give us a like if you find this information helpful. And we're always asking you guys to comment down below, including your comments about the deadlift and how you set your back. And in the comments, some of you will ask, what about those strongmen and powerlifting champions you see pulling loads with a rounded back? That objection opens up a discussion of moment arms, brings in consideration of trade-offs between back extension and the distance between the hip and the load, and the difference between safely training for health and training aggressively for performance and competition. And it proceeds on the entirely incorrect assumption that these athletes are not actually setting their back. In fact, they are, but in a way that allows them to handle ungodly and ungainly loads. But here's the critical question relevant to this issue. Are you an elite strongman or champion powerlifter? Do you want to be? Right. I didn't think so. In the Barbell Prescription for General Health and Fitness, we do subscribe to the starting strength model with a straight, extended, rigid back for the deadlift and the squat and the press, because this configuration is the safest and most mechanically efficient way to move the loads we use to stay fit after 50. Setting the back into this configuration is not just a box to be checked off during the setup. It is an integral component of the movement and must be constantly and dynamically maintained at every point in that movement. The back setup is the deadlift, and the back setup is continued throughout the entire movement. Never stop setting your back. Your deadlifts will be safer, stronger, and more beautiful, and you'll make better progress. Until next time, stay strong and stay healthy.